Hey there everyone, Mazarok here, and today I'm going to be going over certain things that if you're a tank, you've probably yelled this at your screen uh, about some of your DPS. And <laughs> as a DPS, these are some things that your tank absolutely wants you to know. Like, we really, really do. This is a lot of good advice to help make a run go quicker, because some things get blamed on the tanks. And some things rightfully should be blamed on the tanks. Not all tanks are created equal. And we're all human beings, so we all make mistakes. But there are some things that I have seen blamed on myself, which were absolutely not blamable on me. Um, <laughs> like, it's kind of ridiculous to think that, but it, it, it really is. And I'll ask some people in my group, some other people that I notice are kind of playing well and things like that, and I'm like... Was that really me? And they're like, no, like these two other people aren't kicking anything or these two other people aren't CCing anything or whatever. Um, so there's a few things that I want to go over. So as a tank, you're probably going to laugh at this. As a DPS player, please take this as constructive criticism. You might be doing all of these things already and you might not be. Uh, this might be a, a nice reminder to of certain things that you can do to elevate your M plus game. Uh, this is a little bit more geared towards M plus rather than rating so just keep that in mind i stream on twitch every wednesday thursday and saturday come on by check that out uh, i am thinking about maybe adding on a few more days a few shorter streams but we're going to see how that goes on so uh links in the doobly-doo below and aside from that let's get started on uh what tanks wish dps would know number one most classes most specs have and interrupt please use it this is the by far the biggest thing i have an interrupt counter on both on, on my tanks and it's sad to see like two see two to three dps have three kicks the entire dungeon like honestly especially once you get to higher keys the more interrupts you have there's a very good chance it's going to lead to a much more successful run so maybe if you're wondering why you're not uh, finishing keys, or you're depleting keys, or you're just, you think you should be able to like plus two this key, but you're not, you have weird wipes, look at your interrupts. What are you interrupting, and when are you interrupting? Are you even using it? Because so many dungeons I have seen, people just not use them at all. And especially in Shadowlands with the current meta, there are a lot of things to interrupt. Almost every pack in every dungeon has at least one ca uh, interruptible cast. Every single one of them. So why not use it? Now sometimes they get overlapped and things like that. There's a lot of things, there's a lot of like specifics to kind of look into uh, what's at play here. But use your interrupts. Which leads me into the next point which I'm going to tie in. Uh, try and know your dungeons. I know there's a lot of DPS that are just on follow mode. I go where the tank goes and that's it. But you can really become two sorts of players, uh, uh, two sorts of players at this point. You can go down two paths. You can go by one, which as yes, you're on just follow mode. You learn what these packs are. You learn where the dangerous ones are, you know, and everything like that. And you know what's coming by exp learning by experience and knowing what to kick, knowing when to CC. Oh, this is a bad pack coming up. I've got a lot. I've got all my offensives. I'm going to use them. Uh, or you can go the other one, which is you just follow and you never remember anything about the dungeon. And I have seen a lot of DPS who are like, I just follow and do damage. That doesn't help, man. Especially once you're getting into higher end keys. If you're wanting to push those higher end keys and or maybe you don't even have ksm yet and you're wondering why things are going bad and literally all you do is follow so you blame the tanks because why not but you're not learning anything about the dungeons you're just shooting yourself and your party in the foot when you guys do this so it's okay just go from one end to the other and remember these packs if you wipe somewhere there's a very good chance that that is actually a problem pack for the tank Ask what you can do to help out, because sometimes uh, a little bit more CC, a little bit more uh, attention to the interrupts, and things like that can actually go a long way 
to stopping that white where it's literally like i'm gonna go with uh the double goliath pull in spires of ascension having your interrupts on point for that point for that point in the dungeon is incredibly valuable rebellious fist can easily easily wipe a key and or wipe a party on four on, on fortified weeks once you start getting into higher end keys and like i'm still talking only higher end keys i'm still only talking 14 15 tier it can easily if those get off it's a party wipe and there's nothing the tank can do aside from kick one of them every 13 to 16 seconds depending on their kick timer so it's really like they can't do it all they're not stunnable so it's literally people have to kick that cast but if you know that's coming you can plan around it so learn the dungeons yes you can be on just follow but take that take in those experiences and know when things are going right and when things are going wrong and learn from them now this next one i know every single tank is probably going to agree with me especially while leveling or doing uh like lower end keys with newer groups i would much rather as a tank stop pulling for three seconds to write out a quick text about the pack that's coming and what needs to be kicked what needs to be done what to watch out for then have the party wipe because you didn't know the mechanics it's okay to say hey i'm pretty new to this dungeon in m plus because just because you ran it in heroic or mythic zero doesn't mean you're going to get the same experience as you're running it in a plus 10 or a plus 15. they are vastly different because different things matter or different things hurt more with scaling for example the other side uh the uh death's embrace not the death's embrace but the shadow core off the one of the main mobs it's in front of the uh, hakar wing and the ardenwald wing those two need to get kicked shadow core wrecks your tanks and it doesn't wreck it that bad in them zeros even lower in keys it's not bad a lot of them can get off and you're pretty much fine but once you start getting up to fortified 12 13 14s shadow core absolutely wrecks your tank and it's bad so getting those kicks off if you see it being cast or that's the one you need to focus on you need to know that okay and you might not need to know that for a plus two or a plus four but for a plus 12 13 14 15 you need to know that and as a tank every time 10 out of 10 times i would rather take three seconds type that out on my keyboard let the party know then wipe and lose timer count and all of this stuff because no one was honest and did not know what to do and this is a little bit more of a pugging thing if you're in comms same thing you can say it all right you know i don't have to type it out in comms if i'm with a full com group but at the same time if we're in a pug group i need to know i need to know your experience because i'm going in to a 12 13 14 50 whatever i'm going into assuming you know what you're doing okay i like to give pen uh, people the benefit of the doubt say if you don't if you, if you don't i again I, every tank in the world is going to feel this way because i know like every tank i've talked to is the same way I, we would much rather just type it out so you know what's going on because losing that th three to five seconds to type something out is way better than losing the minute to a wipe because if you wipe you have to start from all the way back at the res point and run back and you're going to lose way more time and have a lot more chance of depleting a key and you just have to wait those out and honestly i'll take texting anytime if you're a little bit newer that's fine it does not matter new does not mean you're a bad player it just means you still need to learn what to do in what scenarios and that's completely fine we all have to start somewhere okay there's no one that is literally just well i mean there's probably someone that literally just picks up this game and gets everything off the bat 110 percent about every pack and they just know yeah that doesn't really happen okay we all have to go through our experiences and as a tank i went through a lot of bad experiences with a lot of bad pulls where i was wondering what i did wrong when in fact it was you know two dps had no idea how to do uh or what mob to focus on another big one is in theater of pain in the gore chop wing a lot, i see a lot of dps focus the big guys in the gore chop wing down when in fact the most dangerous uh mobs in that pack or the little guys the blight spears i think they're called that do the withering discharge ability that needs to get kicked and they need to die because withering discharge is a brutal cast 
Um, if it gets off, it's, it can easily lead to a wipe. But I see so many people just aim for the big guys because bigger's scarier, right? No. Blizzard's done a really good job this time at throwing wrenches in those gears. Bigger does not always mean scarier. Sometimes smaller means scarier. I mean, in Necrotic Wake, you look at that. Um, they got some of the big guys, but the big guys hurt the tanks a lot. They can tenderize, and it starts to really, really hurt with the mutilate. But the corpse collectors are by far the worst thing in that pack. If gore splatters get off, drain fluids on your healer, anything of that sort, I mean, it's they have to die. You know, the big guy might be dangerous, but that little guy is way more dangerous. So it's okay to ask. Be honest. We would much rather just be like, it's okay, man. All right, on this pack, focus down the corpse collectors, kick gore splatters, kick drain fluids, and we're solid. That's literally all I have to type. It'd take me five seconds. And that's going to save 25 seconds of lost times just in deaths that we, and then the run back time. So really, it's okay. Be honest. Be upfront. There's like no tank in the world that's going to kick you for owning up to your inexperience and wanting to get better okay man like you know tanks just want to go in have fun tank the dungeon get out like that's what we want to do and the faster that we can do this the better and the faster is always by everyone being honest and saying hey i don't there's a been a and it might not even be a whole dungeon it might just be like hey in the gore chop wing i've noticed that I, we have a lot of trouble there in past pulls is there something i can be doing to make that better and you know what? Your tank might offer insight that you might not know because other tanks that you played with might not know either. So it's just things like that. You know, you can hone into a specific portion of your dungeon and be like, I've noticed we have a lot of problems whenever we run this, this little portion. What's going on? Or, hey, I'm just generally inexperienced in this dungeon. Everyone has experience in one dungeon or another. I have dungeons that I have done the least and don't really care to go to that much. And I have dungeons that I absolutely love to go to and I know every little nook and cranny. And every tank has those dungeons and they're all different, right? There's no tank that's like, I only run this one. And that's the one every tank only ever runs. No, it's pretty widespread. Although a lot of tanks have run DOS into oblivion because everybody wants that blood splatter scale. But that's another story. This one is something very easy to do. And this is going to be for DPS classes that have a lot of ground-based abilities. So I'm looking at you hunters, fire mages with uh, your flame strike and uh, wild, Hunters with Wild Spirits and things like that, is macros help the tank a lot. We have a lot going on our plate when we're doing problem packs, and the thing with problem packs is there's a very good chance those are the ones that you're going to want to be doing your highest GPS on. But we need to know when you're using stuff sometimes. So I have seen Hunter macros were using Wild Spirits now, have that kind of said to the party. To me, that's great. I know now that I have a small circle in which I have to kite and work, and things like that so you can get your maximum damage off because obviously we want you doing maximum damage but at the same time we need to live so there has to be some sort of balance there and sometimes we have to pull things out of your wild spirits it sucks i know there's just no place it's how it works but then there's sometimes we're instead of going left and pulling them out we could have gone right and circled around keeping them in your wild spirits you get in your dps and us still living but i don't always know and as much as Blizzard does try to make those animations clear on the screen, sometimes they get lost in translation or lost in what's going on. Especially like Wild Spirits in, in Ardenwald. Everything's blue there, man. I don't like, the grass seems like greenish blue and I've got my graphics set to 10. So I don't always notice when your Wild Spirits is down just because it blends in too much. You know, and that can be said for a lot of things, you know. Uh, I mean, Abomination lives, Abomination lives, everybody will always notice it. But, like, I know when I'm in Sanguine Depths, um, I don't notice my Swarming Mist on my DK anywhere near as much because everything's red. Like, everything's red. But if a Holy Pally that I'm running with is uh, puts down an Ashen Hollow in, in uh, on, on, like, a big pole or whatever in Sanguine Depths as well, I might not notice it. Now, it's huge, but it's just everything's red there. Like, it's just what it is, and things get lost in translation. So, like, some sort of macro that lets us know, hey, I'm using this ability now. Um, I, you don't want it on something like, you know, you're using every three seconds, but I mean, on a big cooldown, like Wild Spirits, Combust, like, I know so many mages have, Combust is ready! That usually means next pack, they're combusting. And things like that. So, that way, it just, it really does help us know. It really, really does. 
and it helps us know and it helps your dps so it's literally a win-win there's no reason to not do it on some of these things unless you're running only in guild comm groups i mean this is mostly for you know pugs or guilds that don't run with comms a lot so if you're you know if you're in your comms you can say hey i'm using wild spirits here you don't need a macro for it because you're like you're talking to them already um but if you're in pugs i'm telling you i love seeing it take that initiative and, and do it up and it really really goes such a long way to help your dps and help the run go a lot smoother because at the end of the day the tanks just want a smooth run that's what we want <laughs> like we want to get a plus two we want to get a plus three we want to time it whatever we got to do and we want things to go as smooth as possible um and that it's little things like that that goes that go a long way so maybe if you're a class that has one of those things and you're wondering uh, how to get your dps up a little bit this is such a minor thing make a macro <laughs> this next one is for the group finder so when you're pugging this is how i feel as a tank when i see these things and if you're wondering why you have such trouble pugging a tank this might be it if you have if you're starting a group and you're the only dps or you're there's only two of you or you're in a group with this and like literally this in the title says big dick dps i as a tank am not joining that not doing it because that means there are at least one or more people that have no idea what they're doing uh i like every time i have joined one it's gone horrendously every time so i now actively avoid them so if you want to find tanks for your group avoid those things just saying also if you see that there is a tank that is solo queued in the group finder to find a group whispering him i do big dick like yeah is a very terrible way to get in um i will literally reject people or kick them for telling me that right off the bat it's <laughs> it just signals to the tanks that you don't know what you're doing you're not kicking you're not ccing because i mean i love seeing warlocks in my party i love seeing warlocks in my party they're amazing in m plus and they're not given enough credit at all but a warlock that has no idea how to use shadow fury ever in a dungeon it sucks i know it sucks it hurts the dps for a 1.5 second cast but you know what having a group's done every tank loves to see it every tank loves to see it uh, so it's just those things um so it, it watch what you put in your titles or you know things like that if you're if you're putting big dick dps in your title there's a lot of tanks that are going to avoid them um and i have spoken to quite a few tanks and we're kind of, everyone's pretty much on the same agreement sometimes you join in just because that's the dungeon you want you're farming one particular thing or you're just valor farming and it's weird seeing that like big dick dps and a plus five like bro like dude really why like it's a plus five if that's your mentality we already know and we're avoiding it <laughs> so that is one thing that i can definitely say is a big uh might help you in dps find tanks in the group finder avoid those types of scenarios <laughs> and that today is my list five things that i wish every dps would know uh from your tank from a tank perspective these are five things that i wish you guys would know encompassing the general all-around feel it's mostly related to m plus of course there are other things i am going to work on another video if this one does well then uh i'll make another one more dps more things your tanks want you to know but at the same time i'm also interested in doing a video of dps what do you want your tank to know because i do have a couple of things that i wish my tank knew uh from a dps perspective and tanks already have to know a lot i mean there are how many dps specs in the game and knowing just knowing what cooldowns are what and when they're being used is already a big thing but we already have the entire dungeon to work with so there's a lot of things that tank have tanks have on their plates and especially with the current prideful affix <laughs> tanks are now even more responsible for routing and that routing having to take place in 20 percent intervals to not get a pride in a very crappy place because a it sucks to lose out on pride damage when you could take down a pack easily but at the same time it just that's the way the dungeon routing worked do we want them for bosses do we want them for packs uh, and like just the routing alone a lot of things take place so a lot of dps are like oh, i just go on follow mode okay but that means your tank is doing that much more work like 
you know, it, do you have any idea how much work we do in a routing? At least once a week, I'm spending an hour or two on MDT, just kind of going through my routes, making sure things are on point. What do I need for Fort? What do I need for Tyran? Things like that. So just keep that in mind, man. So aside from that, again, like I said earlier, I stream on Twitch every Tuesday, uh, not Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. Come on by, check it out. If you have any tank questions, is there something I missed? If you're a tank, what do you want the DPS to know? Put that down in the comment section below. And if I like it, you know what? I'll use it in my next video. I'll screenshot your comment and you'll be the one that put it and we can discuss it a little bit further. And at the same time, DPS, what do you want your tank to know? Like, what do you want your tank to know? Let's do the same thing on the other side. Let's flip the script. Because like I said earlier, we're all human beings. Tanks make mistakes. And there might be something glaring that with your class or spec that you really want your tank to know and could really, really help out. But they just don't know it because we've already got enough going on. You know, or we're still learning. I mean, I know my tanking anxiety when I was learning uh, how to tank M+, plus and higher end M+, plus, all of these packs and everything else. Man, I wasn't even thinking about specs going on. Like, oh man, all right, so the damages are doing this, like DPS are doing this and that, like what do I do? And like, I was literally hyper-focused on the dungeon and the packs and everything like that. And now that I'm more comfortable with it, I've been able to flip that and be like, okay, I'm with a fire mage, let's pull it like this for their combust. Okay, I'm with a hunter, we can do this every two minutes. You know, I have these things going on that I know what I'm doing. So keep that in mind. So put those in the comment section below. And I hope you guys are enjoying Shadowlands as much as I am, even though 9.0.5 has gone on for way too long. And I'm very, very excited for 9.1. Uh, so far for 9.1, there has been no real big tank changes. Prot Wars are getting a 10% damage increase to their Execute. Minus Condemned. Condemned not being affected. Just Execute. So if you are a non-Venthyr uh, Prot Warrior, you're getting a nice Execute buff. It's nice. But damage really isn't Prot Wars problem right now. But we'll go on to that another time. And Blood Decays Rejoiced. You're getting a 6% aura buff to damage and healing. Is it going to be enough? I don't think so. Personal opinion. I think Death Strike should stay at that 6 but you do all of the other abilities another 10. I think that's way more balanced, but right now, having really played Prot War and BDK a lot, the damage on Prot War versus BDK is crazy, crazy noticeable. In dungeons, I am pulling 3.8 to 4.3k on average on my Prot Warrior in DPS, pretty much all of the time. We ran a, a lower key. I hit 22k DPS sustained by the end of a pull on my Prot Warrior with no weapons. This is not Necrotic Wake. This is literally just Prot Warrior and abilities versus my BDK, which I average 2.7 is high. Like, that's the thing. 2.2, 2.3 is kind of the norm. So they really need a big boost to get up there. So uh, I'll be covering those a little bit uh, a little bit more. I'll be looking more as, as tank changes come along. I'll let you guys know. And things like that so have yourselves a great one be kind to each other let me know in the comment section below what you think have yourselves a good day